In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how to navigate around your project using the DaVinci Resolve interface, as well as how to customize the interface so that you can make it best work for the way you like to have your workstation set up. So right here, we're on the color page. And the easiest way to navigate around is to use your mouse and click on any thumbnail within this thumbnail timeline running along the middle. Now, because DaVinci Resolve is a multi-track capable application, you'll also notice above the thumbnail timeline, there's a mini timeline. And the mini timeline actually precisely mirrors the tracks and media found on the conform pages timeline. So if we jump back to the color page, the mini timeline is a linear representation of your project and you can actually zoom into it using the scroll wheel of your mouse if you want to get more detail and then you can use the scroll bar to move back and forth along the mini timeline. You'll notice as I'm moving along the mini timeline, the thumbnail timeline is updating to reflect which clip is automatically being selected as I move along. I'm going to go ahead and zoom all the way out so that we can see the entire mini timeline at a glance, which is the way I like to work. This can be a bit cumbersome with really long projects where you'll have a ton of clips in the mini timeline. But the mini timeline is a good way to navigate your project in broad strokes. In other words, if I use the mini timelines playhead to scroll along the project, I can scroll the entire duration of the project just by dragging the mini timelines playhead up here in the timeline ruler. On the other hand, the thumbnail timeline is much more useful for letting me choose individual shots. Each shot's represented by a thumbnail, hence the name. Um, but the thumbnail timeline is almost never going to show you your entire project, unless your project has a short number of shots. So as you scroll back and forth along the thumbnail timeline, you'll notice that the thumbnail timeline is stringing all of the thumbnails, all the shots out linearly along one track. There is a non-linear relationship between the thumbnail timeline and the mini timeline that takes a little bit of getting used to. If I start clicking these shots at the end here, these are superimposed shots and even though they appear simultaneously within the mini timeline, they're strung out linearly in the thumbnail timeline. So you just have to be aware as you're navigating through that sometimes you're going to have multiple shots that are actually stacked one on top of another. And in fact, if we look more closely at the thumbnails, you'll see that there's a little V2, V4, V3 uh, identifier in the upper right hand corner. Uh, in fact, there are two numbers in most of these thumbnails. V1 lets you know what video track that clip is on. Dash number, that number is the shot number relative to the video track. All shots are numbered relative to the video track in which they appear. So dash 23 means that's shot 23 on track V1. Previously, you've got shot 22, shot 21, etc. If we look at some of these superimposed clips, however, you'll notice V2, track V2, shot 1, V4, shot 1, V3, shot 1. So that lets you know that it's the first and only shot appearing on tracks 3, 4, and 2. So this identifying system lets you keep track of which thumbnails in the thumbnail timeline correspond to which shots in the overall timeline. You'll notice here for shot 25 relative to the thumbnail timeline that there is a third number in the upper right hand corner. That third number 10 actually refers to the frame number that's being displayed. You can change the frame that's used as the thumbnail in the thumbnail timeline simply by clicking and dragging back and forth. 
So that way, if you, uh, for example, the first frame here, the default thumbnail is black. That's not very useful. If I scrub later on, I can actually see that that's a title. And I can do that with any frame. If I go over here to this car shot, I can go ahead and scrub back and forth. And I can reassign the frame used for any particular clips identifier. Once you do that, you'll notice the frame number of the currently used frame appears. So it's just a way of helping you keep track of what's going on in the thumbnail timeline. Another thing that's useful to point out is that there are two ways of actually organizing the thumbnail timeline. And these two ways, referred to as C mode or A mode, don't actually rearrange the clips in the sequence. They don't rearrange the edit in any way. They simply rearrange how the clips are organized within the timeline for purposes of navigation. If I press Command Page Up, that takes me to C mode. And in C mode, the entire thumbnail timeline is reorganized so that clips appear in the order, in the absolute order of the time code that they use. Now the advantage of C mode is all of your clips will appear in the order in which they were shot, theoretically, which means that like clips will often appear with like. For example, this woman who has two insert shots that appear in this spot, both those insert shots appear together. So if I wanted to work on both of those together, I could. Similarly, other shots that were shot at the same time appear together, just as a function of their time code. And you can in fact see there's a little time code window appearing below that shows the ascending order of the time code sort that's happening right now. So that's C mode. If we switch into A mode by pressing Command Page Down, that takes us back to the editorial order of these shots. So A mode shows us the shots as they appear in the edit, regardless of their source time code. And in fact, now we can see, if we scroll along the timeline, that those two shots of the woman, those two reaction shots, are now separated by the other shots that appear in between. It's also worth pointing out that the relationship between the playhead here on the color page and the relationship of the playhead on the conform page are locked. So if I move the playhead in the conform page to another shot for whatever reason, and I jump back to the color page, the playhead in the color page is similarly moved to the same frame and shot. So there is a locked relationship there to help you manage your project, whatever tasks you need to perform, you can freely jump back and forth between the conform and the color page. And for that matter, the format page, if you need to make any geometric transformations, that playhead is also locked to the position of the playhead in the color page.